Hi, CalKB. This is page 22 in your binder. The figure above shows the graph of the piecewise linear function f. For negative 4 to 12, the function g is defined by g equals the integral from 2 to x of f of t dt. So the fact that g is built from this integral makes me understand that g prime is equal to f and g double prime is equal to f prime. And the first couple questions are having me talk about g having a relative min or max, and does the graph of g have a point of inflection? So part A is about g's first derivative, and part B is about g's second derivative. So I'm going to take a second and make sign charts for both. And because g prime equals f, my sign chart in here is going to look for where f is equal to 0 or where f doesn't exist. So we've got a value at negative 2, positive 2, 6, and 10. And then you're looking at the actual values of f. So all of these values here are negative. And then all of these values for f are positive because they're above the x-axis. So from negative 4 to negative 2, f is negative, therefore g prime is also negative. And then it goes up, and it's still up, and then it's down below the x-axis, and then negative. So this tells me some information about my function. This tells me I have two possible minimums here at negative 2 and 12, and then two possible maxes at negative 4 and 6. So the first question, part A, does g have a relative min, a relative max, or neither at x equals 10? At x equals 10, there is no change. Therefore, there's nothing happening at x equals 10. Neither, because g prime equals f does not change signs. Part B, does the graph of g have a point of inflection at x equals 4? This time, that's a second derivative question, so I'm looking at the first derivative of f. So in my sign chart, I'm going to put places where f prime equals 0 or f prime doesn't exist. So there's Okay, so there's a few places where f prime wouldn't exist, um, and that's going to be right here, because your slope would be changing from positive to negative. We don't actually know what's happening at zero because we couldn't choose between this positive and this negative slope. So these are the places. And then leading up to those, we have a positive slope, then negative, and so on. And the point of inflection at 4 would occur if there is a change in sign. So right here at 4, I see that f prime changes from a positive to negative. Therefore, we have a point of inflection. Part B, G has a point of inflection at x equals 4 because G prime, sorry, G double prime equals F prime changes from positive to negative. You could also say that at x equals 4, f changes from increasing to decreasing, and that might be a faster explanation, and it would, it would also work. Part C, find the absolute minimum value and the absolute maximum value of g on the interval negative 4 to 12. So in 
your explanation, you're going to need a comparison because when you remember what we talked about up here with your sign chart, we said that there were two possible maximums and two possible minimums and only, well, I suppose there could be a tie, uh, but there's probably not a tie, um, which means that you're going to have to compare these high values. You're going to have to compare these low values to determine which one is the highest and which one is the lowest. So in our table, we put these possible places, negative 4, negative 2, 6, and, sorry, 12. And because we know that g is defined by the integral that they gave to us, we can come up with these function values using areas. And what's nice and convenient about all of these areas is that they're all 4. I want you to pause the video, take a second, and come up with the values in your table. All right, here are the values that I'm getting. And now we have to write sentences justifying our work. So the question is, find the absolute minimum value. So that is the output value that they're interested. The minimum value is negative 8 because g prime equals f changes from minus 2 plus or negative to positive at x equals negative 2. And you write another sentence for the maximum value. The maximum value is 8 because g prime equals f changes from plus to minus at x equals 6. These are the kind of problems that you could also have mins and maxes at endpoints, and so you might want to take, a, take some time to review how you would justify endpoints. Part D, for all negative 4 to 12, find all intervals for which g is less than or equal to 0. Recall that g is the integral from 2 to x of f of t dt. So that is an area, um, and you have to consider it in a few different ways. So if you have really big numbers here that are bigger than 2, you have to make sure that that area would be negative. And so looking back at our graph, from 2 to 4, that would be positive. From 2 to 6, that would be positive. When you go from 2 to 10, you would actually zero out. So when this interval here, from 10 to 12, that would give you all areas that would be below because this region here is zeroing out on area, and then you're continuing to drop. So from 10 to 12, we have one such interval. The next situation to consider is when these x values up here are less than 2. And when those integrals, or when those, that value is less than 2, it means that your integral will be opposite, because normally we have the lower number down here and the upper number down here. But when those are reversed, then your integral is opposite. So looking back at the diagram, for example, an integral that runs from negative 2 to 2 will be positive because this is positive area. But our integral is asking us to go in the other direction, so that should be negative. And you can keep going also to negative 4 because, yes, these would zero out. But if you're running the integral this way, this is still going to end up with uh, being a reverse area, so negative. So also from negative 4 all the way to 2, you'll end up with g being less than or equal to 0. So I think there's two different things to consider here when 
x is going to be bigger than 2, and then also when x's are going to be less than 2. And the less than 2 situation is a little bit more difficult to think about because you are taking your integral backwards. That's it for page 22.